May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God <laughs> and the pleasure of the Holy Spirit be with you all. You know, ஒர்க்ஷன்ஸ்ட் <laughs> <laughs> So our registration is already over and we started living as husband and wife the only thing that was left behind was arranging for a reception so that we can you know inform everyone I had not informed anything in my office you know even after the registration I did not inform anyone So it was all a very quiet atmosphere I did not inform my parents that I got married and uh, it was really hurting me I wanted to tell them But my parents were informed Yeah our parents were informed because I didn't want my mom to take any more drastic steps. And I know I it's wrong on my part not to inform them. But then what choice do I have? What if my mom had to do something drastic then I'll be helpless, right? And I'm not even in Andhra, they are not even in Chennai, so I can't rush immediately. Anyway, all that we went through was not easy at all. We made it sound really easy, but uh, when you go through that, you really if you're really attached to your parents especially you feel a deep pain and you feel like uh, should every step would be a doubt for you but then if your love is really strong then you will go go ahead with it and if you feel that way then you need to talk to a lot of friends actually you don't keep yourself very lonesome during that time you have to open up to people you have to explain your situation especially to your partner like you cannot keep your pain with it i know even if you are husband and wife most of the time we don't share our difficulties with our partner right During such tough situations, we chose our partner over our parents. So you need to be really open and frank with your partner and try to console each other. That's the only way you can get out of all this depression and all that. It's very easy for you to get into depression when you do something like this. You know, like stand against the entire world. That's what exactly we did. Uh, if you all remember, we told you during the engagement, we actually booked a hotel. Uh, so we had a hall and all that arranged, and we could not retrieve the advance that we paid them. We paid thirty thousand, but they didn't give it back once the engagement was cancelled. Oh no! So what we did was we used the same hall for the reception as well. It was quite an average sized hall, not very big, not very small. And so I let her cover the bridal shopping and uh, clothes and everything and I'll take care of the cake the decoration and the photography. Yeah so that was how it was planned. So we segregated our duties, we knew our responsibilities and we were like doing a taking responsibility for these tasks. Of course the bridal wear and the clothes and everything is the main part, right? Like and food was also one of the main parts. Before that actually what we had to do was May 29th was this and June 13th was the date given by hotel for the hall you know we booked the hall for June 13th was we it? didn't book the hall for June 13th we booked the hall for the next uh, week mm, yeah. and they had already given the date to somebody else oh no so we were very pissed off about that but they said this June 13th date was available which was a saturday we were particular that we wanted it yeah. on a saturday so that more friends <clears throat> could make it for the wedding. yeah So the next Saturday was given to someone else. So we had to take the previous Saturday, which shortened the preparation time by one week. We got married on May twenty ninth. So from May twenty ninth to June thirteen, it was hardly thirteen days, right? So that's all we had, guys, to actually get the invitations ready to hand over the invitations personally to everyone. So we traveled a lot all over the city, though we were going to get married. and we turned pretty dark actually yeah oh my god all that we, was we really were on a bike and we didn't use a car or anything so yeah we were continuously traveling on the bike so because of this like getting tanned we actually prefer to uh, travel in the evening so we went jewelry shopping in the evening we went to uh, other houses to give invitation in the evening we went to select the invitation card in the evening and what all did we do we we went to the tailor in the evening so we used to keep our um, shopping and other preparation work for the evening which will eventually get extended to the night and during the daytime i had to go to office right so there was no choice at all 
yeah and during that time i used to go about the decoration i used to go about other arrangements like uh, uh, i had to uh, talk to the hall and uh, finalize if the hall it will be available if the food she gave me a list of all the items and they had a list of all the items i traveled there several times to match that and uh, i had to i was very particular about the items on the menu and the uh, hotel also had their own menu i guess so uh, at last we finalized 40 items on the menu so we were like very happy that we got 40 items served to each guest on our reception day we are very very proud about that and everybody who came to the reception said that the menu was great the food was great it was awesome and uh, me being a muslim and he being a christian we had a lot of brahmin friends attending the wedding with their families with their entire family parents and sister and all that and they all came up on the stage and they told us that the food was very lavish and the food was you know like awesome they really enjoyed the vegetarian spread we took great care in you know selecting uh, the food items on the menu for the vegetarian and for the non vegetarians there were uh, hiccups in that also there was supposed to be mutton biryani but at the last moment they said no we can only provide chicken biryani and then we had a fight about that because the deal we had the amount we paid they should have provided mutton biryani and she was getting upset and i was trying to calm her down because the food entirely was her department yeah. and she handled it first class so she said these are the items they must be there chicken mutton prawns everything has to be there and she made sure everything was even crab right yeah and, and the previous night previous night of the reception we had to call the head office of the restaurant and we had to make a complaint that they are refusing to provide mutton biryani and the head office took action and finally the restaurant agreed to provide mutton biryani and my god i was so happy for that <laughs> She really knows how to get out of things. Right? She wants I, it. I won't leave it. <laughs> Otherwise, the first person to be on the line is me. I want it. I'll, I'll get it. <laughs> hey, someone like Ariana Grande. <laughs> That's how we got the food covered, and then her she had to do the sari shopping and the dress for me. So we went to Tinaga. We saw a few places. She, Her mother came along. Her aunt came along. No, nobody came. What's Your wrong? Your mother was there. No? no, only both of us went. No, okay. I'm so sorry. I I think that was that was time. the worst part. Like you know, nobody offered to come even after the registration. Nobody came. Nobody got themselves involved. So all this you guys will face. You will face insults. You will face um indirect poking and Jump. you know. Yeah, like backstabbing, and nobody will, uh, you know, they'll all stay silent, and you know, they'll all be away from you. They won't get involved in anything. But later on, they'll come and advise you. They'll come and tell you, uh, oh, you shouldn't have done this. Oh, you shouldn't have done that. All this is very common, guys. So you just guys, to, it's very easy. I think. Yeah. Before. Imagine you're going for your wedding, sari shopping, and none of your family members are there, and nobody is there to, you know, make you feel as a bride. No. nobody made me feel as a bride except for my husband so he was my parent he was my sibling he was everybody in the family for me he really took great care of me and uh, you know like i didn't feel the pressure of uh, shopping or i didn't feel the pressure in anything he really got me what i exactly wanted of course at the back of my head all the pressure and all the stress and all the pain of not having the family members was there but he covered up for all that she was very sweet she was very understanding i just kept telling her you know this would happen we chose yeah, this yeah we chose this right so yeah, we so cannot... this is what we uh, have to live with this is how it's going to be henceforth we have each other we have to be for each other we have to live for each other and we keep supporting each other so talking about this actually uh, reliving all these moments actually makes our bond really strong actually yeah. <laughs> so we fought the other day when we talked when we spoke about the engagement that got cancelled and then when we spoke about the proposal we actually fell in love with each other all over again so, so all that nice. it's so beautiful actually when you relive all your memories and this wedding also was a fantastic plan and we managed to pull it I off i don't perfectly. even know if we'll be able to you know pull off such a nice and perfect wedding for our son we don't <laughs> even know that but we did a great job and we were completely inexperienced imagine guys when you have a wedding at home a lot of people get involved like our grandparents our parents who are already experienced 
experienced in attending weddings and arranging weddings they had already arranged a lot of weddings but we were so inexperienced we didn't know anything we didn't know where to go or what to do but we were so like we were capable we were hard working and we put in our common sense so all this really helped us a lot the worst part was once we started giving out reception uh, invitations actually uh, i actually did that to my teachers as well from school so i wanted to look good i knew i was overweight and all that so what we did was we went to an adidas showroom and we both bought ourselves adidas shoes so that we could go for a nice long runs and then I she had a weekend and all that so actually we pulled down we wanted to look good uh, i came down to my 70s and uh, i was looking uh, i was confident i didn't to- lose so much weight because since i was doing night shifts i was yeah. working i had to eat junk food i had to uh, you know sleep at the wrong time so i didn't lose much weight but i think okay i was looking pretty decent on she my was pretty day. determined actually she used to walk 6 kilometers and sometimes 10 kilometers along with me he took me to adidas showroom and got me uh, the latest release uh, shoe and the most expensive in the showroom for 8000 bucks so that you know i will show interest in running and i will show interest in you know actually using the shoe and it's been almost 5 uh, five five years. years now and i still have the shoe with me and in good condition and in good condition so it was totally worth it buying that for such a huge price yeah and she really took care of herself and we managed to get back in shape and we were pretty confident about ourselves So that was also one of the main tasks right mm-hmm. you need to look good on your wedding day yeah. so that was taken care of and then my uh, wedding saree